Today's scripture reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, What then should we do? In reply he said to them, Whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none, and whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chef he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. When I was thinking about a legacy that lasts, uh, uh, it was right around the time when I was writing this that the George H. W. Bush's funeral was on. And you heard all of the eulogies, uh, just as I did, and you were impressed like I was, that here was someone who put America before his own political future, when, uh, when he erased his, uh, you know, and read my lips promise and signed a bill that would, that would uh, raise taxes enough to have our last balanced budget 25 years ago. Or you heard the eulogies about uh, how he actually made friends with the opposing side, uh, calling Bill Clinton and, and Barack Obama uh, friends of his? I mean, that doesn't, doesn't seem to happen anymore, right? Or, or you think, of, you remember the, the, the uh, access that he gave to millions of people through the Americans with Disabilities Act, right? But my favorite, and you probably heard it, but you might not, my favorite eulogy was uh, uh, Senator Alan Simpson, who talked about Bush 41 in these words. He said, when you take the high road of humility in Washington, you're not bothered with heavy traffic. <laughs> so uh, here was somebody whose legacy was played out in front of us a couple weeks ago, and it was a legacy of faith, of family, and of country. And I think the question in uh, Advent Christmas time for us is, what's our legacy? And will our legacy last? Well, John the Baptist uh, starts this whole process out by, uh, by talking about um, uh, sort of uh, a legacy that lasts, in that he's saying that if you just float along with the culture and don't stand out in any way, you're not going to have a legacy, right? Uh, matter of fact, his first word that he said, and, and it's a core word of Advent, we don't think about it often, but it's the word repent. It's turning from yourself, or turning from the easy way, the, the, the current of culture, to God, to follow in a different way, and to be countercultural. Interesting, huh? I, I came across a, uh, um, a questionnaire recently that was asking parents, what type of kids would you like to raise? And here were the top three answers. Oh, didn't turn it on. That would help. 
uh, uh, the first 43% uh, of parents in this survey said they wanted to raise honest kids. That's good. 29% said kind kids. 11% said kids with a strong work ethic. Now, that may be your wish for your kids or grandkids. It may not be. Uh, but that was what this survey said. And the interesting thing about that is, um, talking about being countercultural, uh, a, 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 a culture that struggles with truth decay is not going to, on its own, raise honest kids, right? A culture that struggles with cruel impulses sometimes is not going to, of its own, raise kind kids. And a culture that struggles with entitlement is not, on its own, going to raise kids with a strong work ethic. It involves that core word of Advent, that core word of John the Baptist ministry. It involves the word repent, turning from the easy way, the selfish way, and turning towards God and, and living counterculturally. And the fascinating thing about the survey is it, it, it almost matches uh, what John the Baptist said 2,000 years before. Um, honestly, what did John say? John, these people who, who flocked to him in the wilderness by the River Jordan, they were saying, well, what must we do to repent? And this is what he said. Honestly, he said, collect no more taxes than the government requires. That meant that the tax collector would not get paid because they were not, they were not paying anything but what they collected extra from what the government wanted. This was a sacrifice. Or kindness. John said, if you have two shirts, give one to the poor. Hard work. John said, be content with your wages. Wow. Countercultural. That's what it means to repent, to, to, uh, to live in such a way that you actually have a legacy. One that is so honest that people instinctively trust what you say. Even if they, even if they, even if they, would normally question. Or one, a, a life that is so kind that people light up when they're, when they're, when they're in your presence. Or a, a, a work ethic that is, that is so strong that when your boss gives you a job, she forgets about it because she knows that it will be done. That is a legacy that lasts. And if we needed another example beyond John of this, we could easily turn to Jesus, right? Because wasn't Jesus those characteristics? <coughs> I mean, Jesus was so honest that when, when, uh, when faced with the religious powers that be that controlled his destiny, Jesus stood and said to their face, you are hypocrites. <coughs> hypocrites, he said. Jesus was so kind that he touched the untouchables and healed the leper. Jesus was so hardworking that when he prepared to carry my sins and yours to the cross in the Garden of Gethsemane, the weight was so great that Luke says he sweat drops of blood. Now that says that character counts, that Christ is a person of character, and that, and, that, and that the character counts for a legacy that lasts. So here we are, I'm finishing up our last Christmas presents and with Amazon, hopefully not getting our, uh, any porch pirates stealing our uh, boxes. And, uh, and we're thinking, well, the one, the one or two last gifts that we need to get, and what shall it be, right? And we'll get the silly Santa sweaters for somebody or the laser gaming set for somebody else who really wants that. And we'll have a good time with all of that in just uh, eight, nine days from now. But what if we also said, what if we also decided today to talk about in the family, why don't we try to be a little more honest, even when it's hard? Or a little more kind when people around us are elbowing their way or they're, they're mocking those that are with them, well, what if we tried to be a little more kind? And what if we were a little more hardworking this year 
so that we don't just sit back and enjoy our privilege, but that we can trip <coughs> to make the world a better and healthier place. And if we decide to do that, we'll be the church. We'll be Christ's body, who live counterculturally and thereby have a legacy that lasts. Let's pray. Lord God, we're, we're here, really in Advent, to repent. To turn from all of those ways where we've taken the easy road rather than the hard road. All those ways that we'll be tempted again to do what everyone else do, does by cutting corners on taxes or elbowing for advancement or, or, or whatever it is. And we turn from that and we turn to you. For your way is better. For your way is lasting. For your way <coughs> remakes the world. And that's what we want to be used even this week to do. We give ourselves. In your name we pray. Amen.